Imagine a country that takes its climate protection goals seriously, that became rich on oil, yet still aims to ban cars that run on fossil fuels in just six years' time. That country exists. Norwegians aren't crazy, they have a plan. Germans have been building cars for over a hundred years. Do we have a plan too? The world is shifting to an electrified future. It's not an option anymore to say it won't happen. We've crossed the line. It's happening. The question isn't what type of engine is better or more environmentally friendly. The car industry is in the throes of unprecedented change and Germany risks being left behind. The world's biggest car market, China, is powering an electric vehicle revolution and building the cars it needs itself. The world has made up its mind. Has Germany, the birthplace of the automobile, a proud car culture? We know how to build a diesel engine. Ours are probably the best in the world. We can also build combustion engines. The question is, does the world still need them? Is Germany prepared for the future? We're in Bergen. This was once Norway's most polluted intersection, Danmarksplatz, the junction of two major transport routes. Now, the city's biggest electric vehicle charging station is located here. Do you feel like a pioneer or do you feel quite normal? I'll, I'll quite think. normal, yes. It's much cheaper. I don't have to pay the toll road. don't have to go to a gas station. And it's uh, convenient in that way. Everyone says, well, it doesn't work because and it's so complicated and all that. No, it's not. It's not? No, it's no. not. Will you ever go back to combustion engine car? Definitely not. No other country in the world has more electric cars per capita than Norway. 65% of all new cars sold here are electric or hybrid models. The figure's just 7% in Germany. It's not a coincidence, it's political will. Norway wants to be a pioneer. It sees climate protection as an opportunity for its economy, not a threat. It's already world leader in emission-free technology for ships. Drivers of electric cars enjoy tax exemptions free or cheaper public parking, and the use of bus lanes. Charging stations and parking garages are standard. I meet up with Christina Boo. Her association represents the interests of Norwegian electric car owners. Her voice counts, not just in Norway. German politicians and industry executives have also sought her advice. This clear direction is, is for the consumers also um, a clear sign that this is, this is where we're going and this is, uh, this is the future. I'm really sick of hearing car manufacturers blaming consumers, saying consumers are not ready. If someone asked me if I wanted a smartphone before it was launched, I wouldn't have understood even. But if, if someone now wanted to take the smartphone away from me, I would have, you know. It's the same with electric mobility. The Norwegian case show that if price is level, consumers are more than ready to go electric. So don't blame us, don't blame the consumers, do, do the job. In Oslo, 77% of all new cars sold are electric. Within a year, carbon dioxide emissions have dipped by 9%. Norway didn't invent the battery-powered car. In fact, alternatives to combustion engines have been around for a long time. In 1975, Mercedes rolled out its first emission-free van. Nineteen seventy-six marked the birth of Volkswagen's electric Golf. BMW launched its E1 in the early 1990s. 27 years later, and we're still not ready. Germany is nowhere near to reaching its 2020 climate goals, which foresee a million electric vehicles on its roads next year. Instead, we're still debating. Is the diesel engine better than its tattered reputation? Aren't electric cars polluters in other ways? The Geneva Motor Show, stomping ground of the tradition-conscious car industry. Here, nothing seems out of order. 
After all, Daimler is unveiling a van. It's electric. Unfortunately, it's not for sale yet. To date, most German electric vehicles have been hybrids. Big, heavy, and above all, expensive. Prices start at 70,000 euros. Car Nation Germany is evidently in no hurry to join the revolution. It's counting on tried and tested technology, on slow change. Stefan Bratzel is a seasoned expert on the auto industry. He's growing increasingly concerned. I think German car makers have a 50-50 chance of surviving this war of the worlds. It could be that Germany is simply a victim of its own success. That on the whole, with its auto manufacturers, industry and political backing, it was too comfortable to recognize the changes and draw the correct conclusions. Germany has yet to produce a master plan for coping with the changing automobile industry. Some 800,000 jobs are directly dependent on the auto industry. Many more are indirectly dependent. Annual turnover, over 400 billion euros. One reason why German politicians have long worked to avert any threat to the car industry, protecting the sector from sudden disruptive change. China, the world's biggest and most important market. It's still growing. German car makers helped power mass motorization here and made a lot of money. They command a market share of 23.2% in the combustion engine sector, but just 0.4% in the electric car sector, and that's a problem. No one can beat Germany when it comes to technology for diesel and gasoline engines. It has 130 years of experience. But when it comes to electric vehicles, everyone is taking off from the same starting line. And China is racing ahead. By 2025, Beijing wants about 25% of cars sold annually to be plug-in hybrids or battery-powered, not least because the country is suffocating in smog. But 25% in China equals the combined total of new cars sold in Germany, France, and Britain. It's a giant piece of the pie. A pie that, if Germany isn't careful, will be divided up among others. China aims to stop selling combustion engine cars in 11 years. I've arranged to meet a German top manager who spent years at BMW. He helped develop the i8, a small electric revolution at the time. But then he turned his back on Germany and came to China. He took half his development team with him. What opportunities did Karsten Breitfeld identify here that he didn't see in Germany? Things happen in China at lightning speed. It's a gigantic market with 30 million new cars sold each year. There's a ton of capital and investors in China and the issue has strong government backing. In China, if the government says more electric cars are the goal, then the decision is made to install 50,000 charging stations, and by the next month they're in place. So normally, the follow-up question in any interview is, does that mean I'm against democracy? And naturally I say, no, I'm not. But if I look at the European democratic structures, then I see how we spend about a decade discussing new ideas, and after a decade, all that's left is 10% of the original idea. Las Vegas. The annual CES trade show spotlights high-tech innovations from around the world. German manufacturing expertise, lots of cash, and unlimited government backing. The ingredients China is using to power ahead on the market. The M-Byte is a 40,000 euro electric SUV with a 1 meter 20 screen, a tablet on wheels for video conferences or online shopping to pass the time in traffic jams. It's set for production late 2019. I'm meeting another high profile German who jumped ship. Karl Thomas Neumann was on the Volkswagen board. 
CEO of Continental, and then Opal. Now he lives in the U.S., where he's launched a startup. Is this really the dawn of a new era? The dawn of a new era. And down here we have the biggest SUV that BMW has ever built. Isn't that emblematic of the current situation in the German car industry? Sure, you could say that. It's kind of symbolic of what's going on. It certainly looks more like a dinosaur than futuristic. But the dinosaurs aren't nearing extinction. They're still successful moneymakers in the twilight of the combustion engine. Is the German auto industry being held back by its own success? I do think that's a big part of it, yes. It's hard to give up that success and say, to some extent, I have to destroy that success to create a new one. Jobs will be lost, but new ones will be created. And electric vehicles will give rise to new business opportunities. But where is this being discussed in Germany, or even in Europe? Maybe we Germans simply can't part with our gas guzzlers yet, because they're our invention, and so slick. Perfect machines with high-precision parts that just keep getting better, stronger, heavier. 2.5 tons of German engineering genius. The most complex driving machine in history. An electric car doesn't need all that. Instead of an estimated 2,000 moving parts, it has just 200, simply beneath our dignity. Andreas Kenny is one of Germany's leading researchers in the field of transport. If nothing changes, we'll protect the German auto industry to death. We are currently endangering the five, six, seven hundred thousand jobs that we still have because we're protecting something that has no chance of survival. If we continue this policy, then we'll be overtaken, because the world around us is different. People and countries, and above all cities elsewhere in the world, have long since made the decision to phase out combustion engines and switch to battery-operated cars. If we don't play along, we'll lose crucial export markets, and we'll be sitting on technologies and cars that no one needs anymore. That's a problem. And it's accelerating. If Car Nation Germany doesn't look to the future, then others will shape its future. Industry and government have sat back too long. More of the same is no model for the future. We need to hit the road.